Now, there is so much waste methane that you could literally, if you manage to hook up an ASIC to every uh, flare in the world, uh, you would completely end greenhouse gas emissions from methane and you'll be able to power a Bitcoin network 10 times its current size. Is Elon Musk just a troll or is he just bored? And, you know, how much more time and energy, intellectual capacities do we have to waste, you know, on all this fud, fear, uncertainty, doubt that's been spread around? So I'm really looking forward to my talk with Hess McCook, also known as Fry Hess on Twitter. Make sure you read his brilliant article where he dissects and analyzes uh, Elon Musk's misunderstanding. To make a misunderstatement uh, here, <laughs> but it's breaking down Elon Musk's misunderstanding about Bitcoin and where you know Tesla uh, they announced they they no longer accept Bitcoin as a payment and Elon Musk displays definitely a poor understanding of Bitcoin's energy use. So without further ado, this is my talk with uh, Hesma Cook. And let me know if you have any questions, share with your friends and family. Make sure you follow me and Hess McCook on Twitter. Subscribe, please, to my YouTube channel and podcast platform. And if you have any questions, any suggestions for future panel discussions or interviews, talks, just let me know. My EDMs are open. My email address is kd at kvandavani.com. I'm the host of the Kvandavani Connection show. Hope you can enjoy it. And we are live. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, man? I'm doing very good. Good to be back. Love being on your show as always. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been a while. Has um, it's so good, man, to you know to re um, read some stuff uh, by you, and it's amazing what kind of content you've put out lately. So, um, has um, you've uh, went on Nick Carter's show? That was an, uh, a brilliant uh, interview. And I thought we can go into some more nuances or some questions that I might have or other listeners might have. Um, yeah, why don't you just start off as, um, what was the motivation for that article? Was it, so, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, so obviously, as you said, it's, it's been a while. I've been a bit busy, you know, with, uh, with other things. And, uh, and, you know, like to be honest, like I just, I thought the debate was now in good hands. So like I never like uh, you know thought I'd have to be dragged you know back into the trenches, but it is uh, it is wartime out here on the ESG front and all fronts I suppose. Uh, so uh, so I'm back. Obviously the the main motivator was uh, the very very disappointing uh, behavior uh, and statements of Elon Musk, uh, and I said uh, you know that's it. It's uh, it's time to it's time to get back into the into the trenches. Yeah. So, has what is it? Um, to be honest with you, I can't. I can't take Elon Musk seriously anymore. Uh, I'm not sure. You know his intentions, his motivations. Fact is, he is a Cantillian insider. He's massively uh, profiting from, you know, this this uh, uh, central banking. You know, uh, uh, zero or negative interest rate uh, credits. He's, uh, he's massively subsidized by governments, a military industrial complex. It's just a fact. And of course, he's massively uh, profiting off from these so-called carbon credits. Do you want to start off with that, with the background, with the factual background of Elon Musk's position? Or how, how do you want to go along? So like, uh, like well, he, he didn't really say, you know, uh, many factual things. It was mostly like uh, non-factual uh, which uh, which does make you think. So in the piece I wrote about Elon, I concluded like uh, you know with the statement, uh, like I don't think we'll ever know or understand like why he would say such things. Uh, basically, what he said is like uh, you know uh, like so incorrect and misinformed that that somebody like uh, with that frame of mind or under like understanding of Bitcoin. There is no way they would gamble a billion dollars uh, of their of their company's money into such a venture. Uh, so he made heaps of just you know sweeping, just incorrect uh, 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 statements. So you know, it, is it you know, 
Elon misunderstanding Bitcoin. Uh, like it's it's uh, it's hard to say. So effectively, you know, I I I don't take him seriously uh, anymore. I think he's cost a, a lot of uh, people a lot of money. He hasn't cost me anything. Uh, but there'll be a lot of like, uh, you know, mostly poor people uh, who bought high and, uh, you know, as soon as they heard from Elon, uh, sold low. Uh, we saw a lot of that in the, in the on-chain uh, statistics and behaviors that a lot of the selling uh, that occurred like during, you know, the last retracement has been just from new, weak-handed, small buyers. Uh, so uh, as a man of the people, he did very wrong uh, by the people. Uh, secondly. Uh, you know, Tesla, like at one point at its, at its highest point, you know, a few months ago before its, you know, shares came back uh, to reality, uh, was worth as much as all of the car companies in the world put together. And Toyota makes more Corollas and, you know, Volkswagen makes more Golfs. So just one car model from one brand than all of Tesla per year. So Tesla is not a car company. Tesla is an energy company. Uh, so when the CEO of an energy company comes out with complete misinformation and misunderstanding of just how energy works, uh, like it, it just can't be uh, uh, true. It has to be a posturing of some sort. Uh, probably, you know, political posturing uh, related to a lot of, you know, the free handouts uh, he gets from the federal government, all of the carbon credits and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, the way uh, the way it works currently is, you know, like uh, in America, for example, like you have to have an emission free vehicle in your fleet, like uh, to be sold, like in any state. Uh, or you can buy the you know credits from an EV manufacturer and you're allowed to sell whatever you want. Uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, Tesla's revenue comes from, you know, GM and Ford and whatnot, you know, buying up these credits. Uh, eventually, the, you know, the tap will close on these credits because all of the car manufacturers now are making EVs uh, as well. And I think, you know, Tesla's future dominance uh, will lie in the energy game. So that, ha having said that, Mm -hmm. And being a major participant in the energy game, like how can you not differentiate between, you know, uh, uh, you know, carbon intensity in different grids? Uh, so, for example, he says, you know, like Bitcoin uses just uses too much coal. Well, you know, how much coal is too much? Uh, like in terms of carbon intensity, uh, uh, Bitcoin is far lower than both USA and China, uh, which is where most Teslas are sold. So if those grids are clean enough to charge electric cars, why aren't they clean enough for Bitcoin? And what, what does it need to be to be clean enough? Does it need to be 80% renewable, 100? Uh, or is 50 okay? Uh, it, you know, Bitcoin's currently at 39%. Apparently 39%, you know, is not, not okay enough. Uh, even though, you know, it beats uh, the US grid, which is only 20% and the world average grid, which is 29%. Uh, so if 20% and 29% are good enough for your shitty cars, but 39% is not good enough for Bitcoin, how much is good enough for Bitcoin? And this is why when you were telling me earlier, you know, when we were having a, a think about what to call this episode, you know, ending environmental FUD once and for all, I told you, unfortunately, never once and for all, never, ever, like this FUD will come back forever. Because when Bitcoin hits 50, they'll say 50, not enough, needs to be 70. Uh, Bitcoin hits 70, not enough, uh, needs to be 90. Uh, you know, Bitcoin hits 100, well, I don't like Bitcoin, it's useless to me. Uh, you know, they just need to turn Bitcoin off. Uh, so, uh, so, like, uh, what's more important in the, in the debate and, like, trying to get the, the narrative of, uh, like, narrative advanced is to, like, not uh, try to not fight these people uh, on their battlefield and just try to really uh, narrow down uh, into the, like the definition of, uh, of scope. Uh, you know, from, in my view, there's a differentiation, you know, there's a default argumentation when it comes to the CO2 em emissions. And I don't know, I mean, 
I'm sorry, but I got to break this to the people. You know, climate always changes, uh, and, and if climate change, or uh, or also known previously as global warming, I'm not gonna. You know, let's not go even go there. But I'm just saying that um, it's uh, it's a climate industrial complex. I, I think it's. I, I think it should be called climate carbon credit CO2 industrial complex. That's what it should be called. And uh, the rest, uh, yeah, is definitely a valid uh, basis for argumentation, whether that be environmental pollution or, you know, environmental damages. Uh, we can all agree on that, I think. You know, we need to, you know, lower the, the environmental damages or reduce as much as possible and make, uh, make or, you know, create technologies that make these, um, these environmental damages as, as you know, as, as minimum as possible. I mean, what's what's I'll, your take? Uh, yeah, I'll meet you. Uh, I'll meet you most of the way there on that one, but we should debate CO two as well. Uh, but uh, further, further than CO two, uh, we need to discuss greenhouse gas emissions, like, like meth methane, so, like CH four, CH four. Exactly. So uh, 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 methane, F gases, uh, nitrous oxides. So, for example, you know, uh, you know, one molecule of uh, of methane, uh, you know, uh, can make anywhere between fifty and two hundred times the impact greenhouse impact of uh, of uh, CO two, uh, depending on the time frame, uh, you know, you're you're analyzing whether it's you know effects after twenty five years, effects after a hundred years, uh, whatever. But in all of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, CO two only makes up for eighty percent of that. Uh, the other 20 being methane, the nitrous oxides, and the F gases. Now, there is so much waste methane that you could literally, if you manage to hook up an ASIC to every uh, flare in the world, uh, you would completely end greenhouse gas emissions from methane, and you'll be able to power a Bitcoin network 10 times its current size. And in that case, you're actually greenhouse negative. So if we get Bitcoin to 100% renewable, they say, you know what? Not enough. It has to be negative 100% offset. Uh, so the debate will, will never end, but it's important that we zone in on the, because the debate is multi, multi-scoped with greenhouse gas emissions uh, being a big one. And you'll notice they never say greenhouse gas emissions. They just say CO2. Because uh, uh, because Bitcoin may very well eventually become uh, uh, carbon negative. Because uh, if you save one molecule of methane and you know burn that into into Bitcoin, you've saved 50 molecules of CO2. Uh, so not not only can Bitcoin be powered like uh, you know purely on renewable, it can actually like reduce the world's waste. Uh, so like uh, so the CO2 debate is is lost like automatically in its tracks. So Bitcoin doesn't need to emit CO2 uh, to produce Bitcoin. Uh, it can actually consume methane. And we have the technology. I mean, it's, it's a simple technology, right? We just need to, you know, use up those, uh, these. Oh, there's, there's, otherwise... a, there's a surprising, there's a surprising amount of it. Like, a, like, a, yeah, sure, it's not much yet. But I'd say about half a percent to one percent of Bitcoin's hash rate probably comes from the oil and gas field. Between Crusoe and uh, Greater American Mining and uh, 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 you know uh, uh, Steve Barber's operation upstream, uh, you know they'll have you know a, they'll they'll put, push through a couple of thousand, couple of hundred thousand cubic feet of methane a day. So like, you know, they're, they're probably generating half a percent to one percent of the Bitcoin's power is probably coming from the oil field. And like I can see, like I was saying on Nick's show the other day, like I can see that being a quarter. Like over the next five years. Uh, the main bottleneck now is getting rigs. Just getting rigs out to the wells like there's wells wherever you go all around the world. Like the like the amount of methane, like uh, so you know what they you know how they say you gotta you gotta spend money to make money. Well, you gotta you gotta flare fossil fuels to make fossil fuels. 
So about every, about three or four percent of everything that gets pulled out of the ground needs to get flared. Used to be it just used to get vented, but that was so bad for the environment. Everyone, you know, flares now. Uh, you know, some some people are moving towards you know flare reduction technologies, and there's a there's a goal to have you know zero flaring on Earth by 2030, and like there's no way to achieve that really unless uh, you know Bitcoin steps in. Yeah, these are really astonishing numbers and data you've um, you've uh, published in your article on Bitcoin. So, so for the so for the yeah so for the listeners. You can mm -hmm. uh, just pop over to Bitcoin Magazine. If you check out like my author page, uh, you'll see everything I've uh, I've got up there recently. I've uh, I've got a, a little guest writing gig uh, going at, at Bitcoin Magazine, so I'll probably uh, once every couple of weeks uh, be uh, be putting out a, a nice big long uh, fun busting piece. The next uh, next article in the series uh, will be uh, Bitcoin versus the military industrial complex. So. Uh, so uh, my uh, my history at Bitcoin Magazine has been like quite interesting from an article history point of view. So the first article was, you know, I really hate comparisons and we really shouldn't be making comparisons and, you know, Bitcoin needs to stand on its own. And then uh, the the second article was effort. Here's a here's a comparison of Bitcoin versus the banks, and then uh, ripped into Elon for the for the third one a little bit. Uh, but uh, as I said, each each of my uh, each of my articles is chock full of data. Uh, I believe, on average, you know, there's 40 to 50 links, you know, per article. Like the run rate is, you know, one link, one reference per 50 words. Uh, so a lot of data out there, and you know, with that much information out there, so easy to find. Like there's no way uh, Elon Musk like believes what he's saying. Do do you think he's pretending to be to be that? I mean, not knowledgeable or not comprehending, or he's just he's just trolling around. I'm not sure. But. I think he's trolling. Uh, like, well, yeah. Last week he's like, yeah, okay, we met with the miners and Michael Saylor, and like, it looks like it's going to be okay. Like, this is the this is a behavior you maybe expect from like the high school kids. Yeah, it shows a lot of I don't know some kind of image, uh, n not not mature, not mature. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Sure, like he's bored? Is he just bored like, because of his? I don't but know. Like, but for example, like I'm bored all the time, and I troll and I shit post on Twitter and all of that. But I don't have like uh, you know the financial fate of like yeah. uh, hundreds of thousands of people like tied to my behavior. Yeah, not only hundreds, but they actually yeah, so, 40, 50 million followers. So, you know, the, the damages, the consequential damages he's incurring is just beyond, I think, his comprehension. You know, people in, you know, in developing countries, Venezuela, hyperinflationary countries. I mean, these are people that are, you know, struggling for existence, <laughs> for survival, you know. So, uh, so yeah, like I said, we, we will never know. Like, I, I just, I don't see him as a... Maybe because like I'm biased, I I did used to be a bit of like an Elon fanboy, but like I don't believe the guy that's at least managed the delivery of mm -hmm. SpaceX. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just pretend he doesn't know anything about rocket science. He doesn't know anything about math. He's stupid. As the as the manager that put it all together, uh, at the same time Neuralink and at the same time uh, Tesla. Like I just I I do not believe that he's not across this data. This is what I'm saying. The, the, the CEO of an energy company not yeah. knowing what at least the carbon mix of the US grid is. Right. Forget about the world grid. You operate, no, t Tesla has a, has a power plant in South Australia. So the biggest Tesla battery install at utility uh, scale is here in Australia. So it's a global energy company. How does he not understand the global grid and energy cur curtailment and like he's the CEO of effectively like, you know, one of the biggest energy companies in the world. If you compare it to, you know, other, you know, energy companies like Exxon and, and whatnot, uh, Tesla was almost uh, there at the size. It was uh, top 10 largest companies in the world uh, yeah. at one point.
Look, I mean, to be honest, I mean, let's let's you know go back to the hard data and core, but but let's just you know let's just uh, discuss this for for a minute. Uh, this is what I'm saying, you know, the, Elon. I mean, I'm you know I'm not trying to downplay his creative whatever innovation uh, spirit, <laughs> whatever he's got you know on his mind. He's got, I'm sure he's got, but you know, I mean, just just look at the facts. I mean, even PayPal, PayPal. I mean, how much did it really contribute to the success of PayPal, right? He was, I think, was all like bought off or with Peter Thiel, and then it was sort of a mid uh, something in between a company, and then you know once they got successful, and so it's not really, you know, he can't really. Uh, I'm not sure whether he can be really proud of his of his uh, entrepreneurial uh, successes, uh, um, and that's what I'm saying. I always have to emphasize uh, Elon Musk is heavily subsidized heavily into the military industrial complex and uh, i'm sure you know that's why a, a lot of things he cannot talk about because that's whatever under national security or confidentiality or whatsoever so i don't think it's it's a lot uh, you know it's not much of a challenge to build up these you know uh, these these images it, you know whether it be Neuralink, spacex or what have you well, uh, well, uh, someone who's uh, who's watching live right now, my uh, my old mate Bill, Bill Burdom, we had a a little uh, uh, a thrashing out of uh, ideas and brainstorming on possible motives. Uh, it could be that Elon just wants to, you know, quote unquote, fix uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so a solution for him could be to like copy paste the Lightning Network. Call it Tesla coin, backed by Bitcoin, obviously, because it's a second layer. Uh, but all of the nodes are run by Tesla. So it's not decentralized. It's a centralized Tesla chain. So almost, you know, obviously, like Liquid is a federation. So there's like plenty of people in the federation. Tesla could just be centralized, uh, create a currency where, you know, Tesla vehicles can, you know, speak with each other and pay each other. And you can buy Tesla merch and all of that kind of uh, what not and uh, you know you can settle it into Bitcoin uh, but while you're on the Tesla network you'll be using good old quality green energy uh, Tesla tokens so that could be like another another theory where he's saying because he said we're keeping the Bitcoin we're just not going to use it until it's environmentally friendly to do so okay but that's a nice yeah. vision it's a nice vision and uh, it, it sounds to me to be honest with you, realistically speaking very utopian because the the way you have to you'd have to like overtake Bitcoin in terms of all its properties, whether it be natural emergence, oh, no, no, no. Uh, it, the so network not, effect. Not, what what do you mean? I'm sorry. So I'm not talking about it overtaking Bitcoin. I'm uh, I'm saying it's it's Bitcoin. Okay. So so we trade Sats on Lightning. You have LBTC on Liquid, mm -hmm. and you'll have Tesla token on the Tesla network. And like it just settles into Bitcoin. But when you're a Tesla owner and you're buying Tesla, it's, it'll be like the currency of the Tesla ecosystem run on central Tesla servers, which are green and powered by solar energy. Uh, but it's actual money because it's like it's a second layer of Bitcoin. And you think that technolog technologically and, you know, from the infrastructure, uh, point of view well, i think i think he'd be able to uh i think like uh like it's not a decent like it's a fully centralized like uh like uh you never know like uh i'm sure one of these days in the future all of these big ecosystems apple like they will have their own money uh it's just whether or not it'll be backed by real money and it's a second layer bitcoin solution or it'll just be a bullshit shit coin uh, and it'll be money for the ecosystem. If you hold like the Apple token, like certain benefits will accrue to you when you shop with Apple or whatever it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, it'll have to be centralized if he wants it to be green. And like people that don't care about using centralized currencies, which I'd say would be 99% of Tesla customers, uh, would be happy for their Tesla to use Tesla token to pay for like autonomous driving features or whatever like it's something that could be could be done in the future and something that elon uh, might be trying to sow the seeds for i think 
he's the kind of guy that needs to bring a solution to what he thinks is a problem. So Bitcoin doesn't have any problems at the moment. Elon Musk thinks it has a problem. Uh, so he has to invent a solution for this problem and say, here, I invented this for you. Uh, you know, use it. So he's got this solution. I think that's, I think that's, a, very, I think that's a very important thing for, for people like Elon Musk. So I, don't, I do not fear the guy like trying to hijack or take down Bitcoin. Uh, I don't take him seriously. And like, if he wants to offer a fix for all of that, you know, 10x transaction throughput for, you know, none of the energy, he should just make himself a centralized layer two on top of Bitcoin. This, this would be the, the most realistic, you know, approach, like to have a second layer. I mean, it's already evolving so fast, the lightning network and why, why is he not, you know, sitting down with serious people like you or other people, you know, who, who know what they're doing, who know that the data, who know the, the technology, who know how to, you know, uh, convert this technology into something usable. This is something that boggles my mind, to be honest with you. Yeah, likewise. And uh, like, uh, you know, Lightning Labs, like used to live down the street from him. Like, I think they've moved now to Austin, I think, Tesla. Uh, but like Lightning Labs was, uh, was uh, I believe, in San Fran, uh, right, right next to Tesla HQ. He could just go in there and say, here's 10 million bucks. I need you to copy paste everything like you guys have done and just make it run on one big node, which I'm going to connect some solar panels to <laughs> and it'll be done in an afternoon did you hear about that uh, other car manufacturer in daytona day what is it called in canada yeah, yeah, the Indi the, uh, there was the indy oh yes 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 so there was the there was a daytona 500 indy uh, uh uh well not the daytona 500 sorry the indy 500 race but in canada there is an ev company i heard i just saw the headline i didn't read anything about it uh, but the headline said, you know, it can uh, it can mine while it's driving or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, look, uh, you probably like uh, look. I don't know actually how it works, but you need quite a bit of energy to like mine Bitcoin these days. Like, I don't know how many satoshis you'll actually be uh, pulling up on your drive to work. You'll be lucky to maybe get two or three satoshis, I reckon. <laughs> okay. So. Has I mean the the notes I mean I don't know how much you want to talk about because I know you know you hate this compared but you still you know you you sat down you you elaborated on all the data and you sent me your notes you know on the on the comparison between you know the uh, or what what kind of you know emission the military industrial complex produces so it's really eye opening so uh, I don't know do you want to I think this this could be really eye opening for a lot of people because people have no idea how much you know especially you know the environmental damages that the military industrial complex and the, and the consequential damages you know years and decades after i think it's can it be calculated at all or how how easy is that so uh so i've looked actually there is a, a i was both uh, positively and alarmingly surprised about how much the army actually reports so they give a lot of data uh, so, uh, but uh, when you're assessing greenhouse uh, gas emissions, there are like three scope elements. So scope one is basically, uh, so like my scope one emissions, like of this conversation will be the electricity that my laptop uh, is using. Basically, that's the energy I'm consuming. That's the scope one emissions. My scope two emissions is like I'm sitting in a room uh, which has got the lights on and like that's giving out, uh, using up energy. Scope three is the design and construction of my entire house, all of the fuel that was used in all of the equipment that built the house, the silicon in my laptop. So once you include scope three, numbers really start to blow out and get realistic. Uh, so, uh, why aren't scope three items calculated usually like it's very hard. Uh, like it just, it requires like a lot of work, a lot of rationalizations. It's just easy to calculate, you know, how much we paid for electricity. That's our footprint. 
like how much electricity we used. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, you got to get me back on topic. I, uh, I've lost yeah. my trail of thought. No, I just wanted to know. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. The scope three emissions. So mm -hmm. most governments uh, will report their scope one and two uh, emissions of the military. So the scope one and two emissions of just the U.S. military, uh, uh, the, the Department uh, of Defense uh, reports on it, very, very detailed how many barrels how many million barrels of jet fuel they use, how many, how many million barrels of diesel, uh, Navy oil. They, they catalog everything it costs to run an aircraft carrier, but nothing about the design and construction and disposal of the aircraft carrier. So the total emissions of the Department of Defense operating is 60 uh, uh, megatons of carbon per year. Bitcoin is 50. The Pentagon building by itself is 20. Mind boggling. This is really but the Pentagon, but the Pentagon building, like you don't see all of it. A lot of it is underground, but in terms right. of square meters of office space, the Pentagon is the biggest building in the world, like by far. Crazy. Uh, so it uses a lot of energy here. <laughs> you know, some people find Bitcoin wasteful. I find the Pentagon wasteful. Uh, but I digress. So uh, the scope three, uh, the, the what scope three consists of is the military industrial complex. So uh, some researchers have done like extensive uh, research on this, and it was all based on you know how many people the military industrial complex employs, how many factories do they have, and in the USA the military industrial complex employs 14% of all industry. Uh, so the military, so the, the US Army contributes 60 megatons, the industrial complex tax on about another 300 uh, per year. Uh, so all up on average, and this is about the same for most armies except the US, uh, because of the US Navy and their control of the skies and the seas, uh, they have to use a, a lot more jet fuel uh, than everyone else. Uh, but it's estimated all up that in a cold year, and by cold, I don't mean the weather is cold. I mean, not active war. Uh, you got about like 5% of the world's emissions are due to the army and military industrial complex. In a hot war and especially hot years, like when you saw Iraq, Iran war, uh, Kuwait in the Gulf war, when you had oil fields that were on fire for three to four months at a time, that's another 1% of global emissions. So in a cold year, 5% goes to the military industrial complex. Uh, and in a hot year, it's 6%. Bitcoin is currently 0.1%. Yeah, I think. And trending towards zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if people just understood, like, if that all that energy w would have been or could be allocated to real productive use, you know, to, for civilian use, for, you know, innovation, for what real, like, uh, prosperity and abundance for society, uh, it's mind boggling, to be honest with you. It's really mind boggling. So I think, but it's and a good the, comparison, to be honest with you. I think it's, it's one of the best comparisons because it shows, like, the usefulness of Bitcoin. Like, what does Bitcoin eventually, you know, uh, the cascading positive effects that it will produce in the years and decades to come is unfathomable. But look, I understand when people say, like, it's a long bow, like, to draw. Uh, but, like, I just, I want to, like, uh, uh, try to mean this idea out there that like, uh, like uh, Bitcoin is a full stack PPE solution. Politics, philosophy, economics. Uh, it provides a framework uh, of all three uh, for anyone who decides to be uh, a user. So if Bitcoin is a full PPE stack, you have to compare it to the legacy PPE stack, which is the combination of banking, finance, and insurance, government, and the military. 
So I will be having a look at, uh, at what governments use. I, I do have a, have a scope uh, to make it fair. I will just be doing like a mandatory government functions. Uh, so I won't be counting healthcare emissions because not every government provides healthcare. Right. But basically looking at government in terms of like a, a, a absolute mandatory essential functions, there's actually a UN like labor scope uh, for that. And like uh, the mandatory government uh, sector, uh, including uh, defense, uh, employs 4.1% of the world's workforce. Astonishing, yeah. So uh, they want to come talk to me about waste, like Bitcoin is a waste. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, but somebody's got to do the calculation. I think it's it's really uh, uh, super valuable what you're doing. Has so I hope that you know at least in the decision making levels, would it be whatever legislative levels or I, I don't know people like you know who have ethos, who have ethical principles like Rand Paul or Ron Paul. You know these people or or. Cynthia Lummis, you know, who are hardcore Bitcoiners now, I hope they, you know, they can ha they can exert that influence with with the data now they, you know, that other experts like you have produced, and sit down, you know, and and deliver results, data, hardcore data, and and you know, convincing arguments, and in order you to. Know, I think uh, I think actually uh, Cynthia Lummis has already started to to flex her muscle, uh, yeah. uh, a little. Uh, and like, and that's basically like she's doing that through like incentives for mining, mm -hmm. uh, and like, uh, like that's that's I think if, pu if you know politicians like uh, get their thinking caps on, I think uh, they they're going to warm to this industry very very quickly, uh, especially politicians in states that have a lot of oil and gas. Yeah. Uh, has, let me screen share this article again of, of Bitcoin Magazine, where you you know also talk about the renewables. Can, we, can you just check for a second your microphone? I'm not sure whether I'm the only one who hears your sound a little bit dampened. Is, um, what kind of microphone are you using? Is that your? I'm I'm, uh, I'm using the AirPods. Oh, that's why. Okay, because it's pretty dampened. Uh, no problem. I mean, I can hear you, but I'm just you know for the listeners. Uh, so let me. Go to the this article where you say you know where you elaborate on that you know on this announcement that, which Elon Musk had done you know Tesla had suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin we're concerned about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions especially coal which has the worst emission of any f fuel and then you you know you righteously say you know I have two words for you Mr. Musk prove it prove that the use of fossil yeah. fuels for Bitcoin mining is rising unfortunately for everyone this is now what my question is because you say here you know you uh, you have a source the Cambridge Center alternative finance estimates that 76 percent of all miners use renewable energies as part of the mix with between 29 and 39 percent of all energy now, I, I, I can imagine it's hard to assess like the precise number, but it's like 29% the minimum and 39% like the maximum average. Yeah. So like uh, most of their work, it's, uh, I should ask them about it actually. So they refer to 39%, you know, throughout their report, they calculate it, they show the mix. And then later on, they assume it's 29%. Uh, so uh, I'd, uh, I'd say, Probably thirty nine percent during like the wet season and twenty nine percent during the not wet season. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but that seasonality will go now that you know China has apparently banned mining. Right. So uh, all of that mining will go to greener, literally greener pastures. Right. Uh, as you mentioned, China now. Do you think? Do you see in the very foreseeable future that Bitcoin mining becomes? You know exponentially more decentralized because you know of all the uh whatever bitcoin mining bans or uh energy you know policies that you know chinese miners gonna go with with their with their uh, with their mining units to whatever to more bitcoin mining friendly c uh, countries like it like canada usa well, if uh, well, if they're going to ban get banned, they're definitely going to leave, uh, and they'll basically just go wherever power is cheapest. 
uh, you know, very, very easy, uh, very agile. Uh, you can literally put your, you know, rigs in a container and ship them. You can be anywhere in the world in two weeks. Yeah, it's a huge advantage. See, yeah. So if if uh, if it's within the same country, you can do a relocation over a weekend. Half a day to pack, a day to move, half a day to unpack. That's so much flexibility, right, and efficiency. So yeah, but even if you're in China and an opportunity came up in Costa Rica, you load up in a container, it's down at the port, you know, eight days later, it's in Costa Rica at the port, drive it out, you'll have like, you know, a 10 day turnover. So probably at worst anywhere in the world, like you can relocate a mining operation in a maximum of two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is going to be really a, a very fast process. It's, it's, I'm, that's my my opinion. The deployment and you know the efficient usage of of wasted of otherwise wasted, uh, you know, flared gas or what have you. Just you know, pack up your unit, move, and just plug it in again. I mean, what do you need? You just need an internet connection, satellite connection, whatever you need, right? Yeah, and like it's becoming exceedingly cheap. So hat tip. To Elon Musk and Starlink, you can get solid internet basically anywhere in the world like that you are. You just have to buy a dish for a couple of hundred bucks. Yeah, and, and like, you have you know, super high band, uh, uh, super band. Oh yeah, it's very high, very high bandwidth. Uh, so like, uh, and what you'd need is basically you need a, a decent size, you know, electrical feed, and just a concrete hard stand. Right. Like, uh, like, I don't think people uh, really actually comprehend, like, uh, how many miners you can fit in a little container. So in a standard, you know, 20 foot shipping container, you can probably get like 600 rigs in there. Uh, you know, 600 times, you know, three kilowatts per rig, you've got 1.8 megawatts in one container. <laughs> so you probably only need you probably only need like a hundred like you know 500 containers full of ASICs mm -hmm. parked at the doorstep of a nuclear power plant yeah and and they would use up all of that power 24 7 yeah you have, a, you have a customer for life out in the middle of nowhere yeah you know the the sad part of about nuclear technology is that it has this negative connotation. It has this negative image because of all this, you know, because of all this, you know, brainwashing. Terrorism. Yeah, not only that, it's like you know the whole our whole you know the, the, it's all like uh, preoccupied with with this image of of nuclear and thermon and nuclear and hydrogen bombs and it's all negative, you know. But I mean, I'm sure there is there is super advanced, uh, you know, civilian use of nuclear technology out there. Would it be? I think even France has like a very advanced uh, nuclear technology, or Russia, or other countries. It doesn't matter, you know, any other country. But they just need to develop it and and scale it up. But um, but unfortunately, they're shutting more and more down. Look, there's enough uh, like there's enough waste methane out there. To power the green revolution. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just going to mention in your article. Because uh, because energy companies are going to stay as energy companies. Uh, yeah. But you know, in the future, they'll change their fuel mix. But if they can turn their waste into money, uh, they can change their fuel mix quicker. Right. Yeah. This is the part where it really sh shocked me positively, uh, where you say, you know, uh, Musk. Uh, Elon Musk clearly knows that methane has over 50 times the greenhouse gas effect as carbon dioxide and surely knows that there are now, now miners who use waste methane to mine Bitcoin, such as upstream data and, so, and great mi American mining and so forth. And yeah, and I think were you talking just about the US, uh, the methane production, uh, yeah, that it can power it Bitcoin is. more than 10 yeah. times over? Yeah. So, so uh, in uh, in America, I think uh, America could power Bitcoin on its own, but if you include the world's flaring, yeah, ten times over. Because yeah, like uh, like I said, you gotta uh, spend money to make money. You gotta spend gas to make gas. 
And even though America like produces a lot of oil and gas, like they're small if you compare Saudi Arabia, Russia, like the gas, like the o ONG giants. Uh, like America makes up. Oh no! Look, proportionally, America probably makes makes up for about ten percent of the flaring mm -hmm. of the okay. world's flaring. Okay. And if they if they know what's good for them, like every single flare pipe will have a uh, you know should have a Bitcoin rig uh, uh, sticking out the end of it. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to this nuclear issue. Do you think you know eventually, as it scales up? The Bitcoin mining incentivizes the, you know, the further development and the, the you know, the usage of, of nuclear technology and nuclear yes, energy. Absolutely. Like uh, yes, but it's going to require like uh, like uh, extreme like bravery and heroism uh, because like a uh, a nuclear plant like would not be cheap. So you'd be starting off with a capital outlay uh, of at least you know. Uh, Ten billion dollars uh, to get a gigawatt of uh, of energy, uh, but this energy is like uh, uh, clean. It's uh, and it's twenty four seven. People don't want to live near it. Understandable. Uh, so you just build it really far away, and right next to it, you just build a flat concrete slab and put three thousand containers there. And then you have customers for life, literally forever. For hundreds of years, you have customers forever. But the risk is maybe like Bitcoin might not be there forever. So then you have to, you know, extend the grid out from the middle of nowhere into the city because no one wants to live near a nuclear power plant. Uh, but a pension fund that needs like, you know, solid, uh, consistent asset liability matching and payout uh, for its clients. Uh, a nuclear power plant is a money printer, basically. Nice, consistent cash flows, 24/7. Uh, and as the you know as the rigs uh, get better and better, uh, you can probably fit much more hash rate into a into a smaller space. Uh, even the concrete slab wouldn't need to be that big. <laughs> That's amazing. So, has um, is there anything? Um I think you should go more more on podcasts and have panel discussions with you know other experts or other Bitcoiners. Um, so I guess you're going to so do yeah, that. I am uh, I am making myself available. Yeah. So uh, no no it's time to it's time to get back uh, back into it. Like uh, I fell out of the swing of things uh, for a little while, uh, but yeah it's uh, Everybody, like, unfortunately, this is this is one of those things where everybody in the community has to be like armed uh, to to fight the narrative. Uh, so it's very very important that everyone gets an idea of just uh, the scope of world energy. Uh, I remember a long time ago, maybe it was on John Vallis's show, almost two years ago, uh, that Bitcoin is an energy play, not a finance play. Exactly. I might have even said it on Nick's show. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's. It's equally important that everyone understands world energy, uh, like in conjunction uh, with Austrian economics, mm -hmm. and you know, obviously the code and all that kind of stuff. But just getting—you don't have to become an expert on world energy. Just get an idea of just the scope of like what's going on in aggregate around the world. Uh, clarify your your terms. So CO2 versus GHG. Uh, is a is a key one. Um, making sure not to mix up energy with electricity, uh, because a lot of hundreds of millions of people live life without electricity, uh, but they all have energy, and uh, it's the same with Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't need electricity. It's nice to have electricity, uh, but it doesn't need electricity. Uh, you give me a methane pipe, I can get you some Bitcoins. It just needs energy. Uh, so yeah. that's uh, that's another one uh, uh, to not get confused. And uh, finally, uh, energy use is fine. Like we've only made advances in civilization because of our energy use. Exactly. It's the it's the emissions that are that are bad. It's the waste that's bad. And uh, uh, Bitcoin helps cut emissions and waste. So yeah, it uses electricity, uh, but it's uh, it's not as dirty as you might think. 
Yeah. To be honest with you, I mean, I think it's really ridiculous that after all these years and so much hardcore data and publications and discussions and, you know, uh, <laughs> solid arguments, we're still discussing, you know, the, <laughs> uh, all this energy we have to, you know, trying to, trying to debunk or to, 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 what do you call it, to bust all this energy FUD or all this FUD, you know, in general around Bitcoin. And it's a little bit saddening after, what, 12, 13 years of Bitcoin, you know, it's already so much data, so much, you know, arguments uh, put on the table. Uh, it's a little bit saddening, you know, instead of focusing on, on you know, on the, on the midterm or long-term uh, vision and goals, what we can achieve with Bitcoin, you know. So to zoom out a little bit, to wrap this up, uh, has, w um, do you have any other thoughts to share, like geopolitically, macroeconomically, or in terms of auto DCA? Where is the price going? How much manipul like like how, what's the potential of manipulating the Bitcoin price with with all these you know artificial uh, derivative products, the futures products, or what have you? So what I can say about uh, auto DCA is uh, if uh, if you're not already doing it, get onto it ASAP. Uh, if you are already doing it, just also note that this is a very rare time in history that like Bitcoin is under the 200 day moving average. And traditionally these are where like the fortunes are made. Uh, so if, if your budget can, uh, can wear it, uh, double your daily auto DCA uh, until we're back up over the 200 and then you can, uh, uh, you can uh, dial it back uh, if you need to. Uh, but slow and steady always wins the race. If you have a look at, uh, you know, people who bought a lump sum on January 1st versus the people that have been buying daily, like the numbers are about the same. Yeah. And, you know uh, and the numbers will always be about the same. It just maybe just doesn't feel like it, like when the price is, is, is ripping up, but just chip away every day and I promise you, you get there. Yeah, but there's still, still a lot of people that, you know, that used to say, oh, I'm going to buy when it's going slower, but once it's lower, then you know they have all kinds of other excuses. The psychology of human beings is really interesting, you know. <laughs> so when oh, it look. back, when it goes back to hundred or two, or when it, when it when it's finally reaches hundred, two hundred in in fiat terms, then uh, you know we'll see. You know. You know I've been guilty of that. Look, we all have it. All Bitcoiners learn eventually. Some the easy way, some the hard way. Uh, I unfortunately had to learn the hard way early on, but now that there's, you know, us to be here for you guys, like as a community, like you do not have to learn these lessons the hard way. We've done the learning on your behalf. Uh, so slow and steady, like wins the race. Uh, you know, it, it, especially in times like this, when we're below like a major long-term average, I usually don't believe in technical analysis, uh, but being, you know, an energy guy, a nature guy, uh, I always like Bitcoin will always return, like will naturally return to its mean, uh, and it'll go over it and it'll go under it, and its mean is heading in a in an upwards direction. Uh, so now that we're under the 200-day mean, uh, if you can afford uh, to be a bit more aggressive in your uh, auto DCA budget, uh, it's a good time. Uh, it's a good time to up it. What's your price prediction until the next halving or, or shortly after the next halving in 2024? So uh, an earlier prediction of mine was on uh, block 700,000, which is very soon actually, which is in about three months or so. Uh, and this is a, a year and a half old prediction, way before COVID even, when Tone Vase was in Sydney uh, visiting us. So maybe uh, uh, mid to late 2019. I said 70,000 US by block 700,000. And I think I'm probably going to be right, actually. So we're block 685,000 or something right now. Uh, let me let me check the time. I don't have a block clock yet. Me neither. I'd love to have one. It's on, uh, like yeah, me too. It's on, to it's, on a, it's on a multi-month back order. So a very, <laughs> uh, very popular product. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I do believe the time is, is around 685,000 or there or thereabouts. So at the one third point, uh, of, uh, of the bull cycle will be block 700,000. Okay. 
So we so we got a we got a, a halving every every two hundred and ten thousand blocks. So uh, a third of the blocks seventy thousand, and the last halving was at block six hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah. So I'm saying at one thirty into the bull cycle, so one third into the bull cycle, we'll be at seventy thousand US. Okay, got you. Um, you know, there will come a time, you know, we never had a money with absolute scarcity and with the magic sauces of difficulty adjustment and halvings and, you know, and supply shocks and, uh, you know, with, cons with, with an ever increasing demand, the supply gets, you know, less and less and less. And so it's absolute scarcity. So it's never been done. So do, when do you think, uh, you know, we're finally going to go off th this mindset of thinking in fiat terms? Like just thinking in purchasing power. I think there will come a time with it in five years, in 10 or 15 years. It doesn't matter at what price Bitcoin is going to be. It could be at, you know, 10 million or 1 million or 20 million. It doesn't matter. It's, I think people need to really readjust their thinking. It's in purchasing if, power. Uh, if, uh, if we can get 3% of the world's adult or working population, mm -hmm. just 3%. Uh, doing ten dollars a day, uh, like that's that's enough. Bitcoin will be five to ten million each. Yeah, but in purchase, purchasing power, it could be it could be exponentially more. You know, this is I think we have to look, change put, our mindset. Put, put it this way: so three percent of like the you know working adults uh, would be you know a hundred to one hundred and fifty million people. At ten dollars a day, that's a billion and a half dollars a year, uh -huh. sorry, a day uh -huh. uh, going into, into Bitcoin. So that's 500 billion a year uh, going in. Uh, so yeah, it'll be worth you know, a million to five million each and the other 97% will just have to learn. Yeah, yeah, it's all a learning process. Uh, so the, the trick is to get into that, the 3% that learns first. Right. Or learns that DCA is the way uh, first, because that's basically it. So Bitcoin offers me a PPE stack, politics, philosophy, economics. Mm -hmm. So I I just migrate to that PPE system, and I do that daily. Uh, so the more people just migrate to the system, like Bitcoin just gets just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, as it gets like, if you think you know, people were excited about buying Bitcoin at sixty thousand. Wait to wait till you see how excited they get to buy it at six hundred thousand. Yeah, it's a surprise that everybody deserves, you know. Right, because it's going to a million, six hundred grand to a million. That's right. right. So, like, uh, so, so auto DCA is the most important thing you can do for both yourself and for Bitcoin. If you get that steady stream of money coming in every single day, relentlessly, the selling eventually runs out. Yeah, it's the most relaxing, you know, way of really investing and saving, uh, investing into your own future, into your family's future and into your own life. Um, and just, you know, just, 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 just auto DCA, just, you know, accumulate, you know, constantly and, uh, and eventually will, you know, gradually and suddenly happen. Uh, so has, uh, well, well, uh, uh, like, uh, just before we wrap up, uh, I might add, so, uh, when I first preached auto DCA, it was, I think, November 2018. Yeah. It was my first article on it. So forget November and December. Let's say you made a New Year's resolution and started on the 1st of January. Mm -hmm. 1st of January 2019 until 31st of December 2020. So in the two calendar years, 19 and 20, $10 a day got you one Bitcoin. Right. And that's what I said in my article, like a lot of people, like you feel like you're sufferers now, but I promise you, I promise you even $10 a day. Uh, and like, I hope a people, I hope uh, a lot of people took me up on my offer and my promise that like, it's just $10 a day and you'll have a full Bitcoin. Probably not anymore. That time's gone now. Uh, but like, uh, uh, you know, like it's still a good amount of Bitcoin. You'll be, you'll be saving up yeah. just $10 a day. Yeah, with a with a reservation, I mean, you know, the the average family, the average household in Western countries, definitely, I think ten dollars for a lot of people in other countries is a huge, lots of money. 
but let's just say you know Europe, Canada, U USA, like Western countries, you know. So OECD, OECD average daily salary, average weekly salary is seven seventy US. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is whatever is hundred and ten bucks a day, or sorry, seven seventy a week. Yeah, hundred and ten bucks a day mm -hmm. is like uh, average salary. So yeah, ten bucks would be like uh, you know on the on the larger side, but the OECD is like a, it, it consists i think of something like you know 50 yeah, or 60 it, countries yeah uh, so the high so you know the top 20 oecd mm -hmm. like their average weekly wage is uh, is you know uh, up closer to you know uh, 900 uh, to 1000 uh, uh, a week so you know 70 bucks a week on bitcoin it's not that much of a of a of a of a you know yearly yearly budget you know for the for the average, average, average man, but for like a lot of people that are in Google and currently working as software engineers at these big companies making 150, 180 grand a year, like 10 bucks a day is the absolute minimum charity you can mm -hmm. contribute to propping yep. up the Bitcoin price floor. Right. And if you know what's good for yourself, you should be pumping in 100, 200 bucks a day, you know, at that wage. Yeah. So I tell people that know, it just needs like two or three, four percent of the world's population. It just—it's really a really low, low critical mass of people. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's about it. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Get yourself a studio microphone, has for next time. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> Listen, your I'll voice to. is really that, dampened. <laughs> I thought these AirPods would do a good job. They usually do. Yeah, it's it's pretty damp, and I hope my listener is gonna not gonna complain because usually my listeners complain. But you know that's why I got this uh, microphone and everything set up. Uh, so, has any final thoughts, or where can people find you? Any other resources, links coming up, articles? All right, so people can find me uh, on Twitter at Fryer Has, and uh, you can uh, also uh, you can visit my author page on Bitcoin uh, Magazine. I'll, uh, I'll be doing a lot of writing for them uh, over the next uh, several months, uh, mostly around uh, around this topic, energy and uh, and also the PPE stack. So uh, get more into the cosmic uh, cosmic side of uh, of uh, philosophy as well. Awesome. Hey, bro. Uh, hope we can you know meet each other again in person. Uh, hopefully, you know when, wherever. One of these days. Yeah. I couldn't even make it, you know, to the conference in Miami. You know, it's a lot of so many obstacles. But uh, yeah, we might see each other in Europe or somewhere on, at a conference in the future. Absolutely. Okay. Has. But until but, but until then, we got to keep it digital. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Take care. Have you a great too. day. Yeah. Talk to you soon. You too. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah. Enjoyed this. So, how did you guys enjoy this? fascinating episode with Hesme Cook. Make sure you, fo you follow him on Twitter, read his article, his brilliant dissecting, analyzing article, breaking down Elon Musk's misunderstanding about Bitcoin, future articles coming on the military industrial complex. And you know, I think if Dwight D. Eisenhower were alive today, he would say, he would probably not only warn about the military industrial complex, but about, you know, warn you about the CO2 climate change hysterical, you know, uh, in, industrial complex. So, you know, a huge scientific fraud, it's being on, ongoing, which, uh, you know, every year there's a trillion dollars spent on this carbon credit scam hoax. It's a fake, you know, it's all about, you know, just look at the incentives, just look at the, you know, controlling and power structures, the fiat centralizing structures, this all goes back to money. You know, that's why we need to fix the money. So make sure you follow uh, has me cook and let me know your questions I'm hoping we can uh, repeat these uh, talks hopefully with a professional microphone the sound wasn't that uh, you know perfect but I'm sure has cook gonna get his professional mic for his next interviews and let me know if you have any questions for uh, suggestions for future talks my DMs are open and subscribe please to my YouTube channel and podcast platforms and if your love, if you love any of my episodes, just leave a five-star review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or any kinds of comments or reviews. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon.